Uh, the two episodes we picked for this week are considered not just some of the best episodes of Twilight Zone, but some of the greatest television episodes in the history of television. Keep that in mind going into this. Now, a lot of people shit on Twilight Zone because they're like, oh, it's old. If you can take the idea of the show and take it back to 1959 when it was created, which at this point is 62 years old. This is revolutionary. No one had done this. This was completely off the cup. Like television wasn't colorized yet. That's where we're at with this. Now, getting some of the best actors of those age to be a part of an anthology series that didn't really have a story, uh, or I should say a running story. Um, you know, they created what to this day, in my opinion, remains some of the best television of all time. I love the, the show. I watch it every year around Halloween uh, all the way through. It's, it's really easy to digest because you don't have to have this running story that goes all the way through. It's individual stories. Some of the episodes absolutely suck, like completely transparent. But for the amount of episodes there are, in comparison that's to the ones that suck and don't. True. Yeah. And that's kind of par for the course for anthology. Some are great. Yeah. Some are some Black are not Mirror. so great. I mean, without, you don't get Black Mirror without Twilight Zone. Keep that in mind. Like, True. it doesn't happen. The, the, Black Mirror is a modern version of Twilight Zone. Black Mirror also does a little bit more of connecting each episode. So, you know, there's a little Easter eggs to show you that it does exist in the same universe. Twilight Zone doesn't do that on purpose because they 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 like to mix it up. So time enough at last, if you've never seen it, it stars Burgess Meredith. Burgess Meredith uh, was the penguin in the old Batman series. If you don't remember uh, the 60s one with Adam and 70s one with Adam West. Um, and he basically is this bank teller that loves to read. That's all he wants to do. That's how he wants to spend his time is reading. He tries to read at work and he gets in trouble at work. He tries to read at home and his cunt wife won't let him read at home. Dude, she's such a bitch. <laughs> she's such a bitch. I don't and use dude, that when word she lightly. she ruins his books, <laughs> when she scribbles on every his page. His poetry book, yeah. And ruins his, she, and she sets it up like such, she's like, oh yeah, like portrays like she's about to like include herself in, in his interests and open up and she does it just to set him up just to tear him down by scribbling in his book and ruining every page and she has this smirk on her face mm -hmm. while he's like realizing his book is ruined so uh, by the way out of the night Rod Serling himself the creator of Twilight Zone wrote 92 episodes of Twilight Zone and this one is his favorite so that episode. also says a lot. Um, uh, and even I was watching the other night with Danielle and there was a camera shot that they did. And she was like, my God, he was like 40 years ahead of his time. He's a genius. People still, still to this day say they get ideas for shots and framing and stuff from from Twilight Zone. So uh, but yeah, his wife is, is absolutely terribly awful. So the, the one day he goes into the bank vault and he eats his lunch in there, even though he's told not to kind of shuts the door berated yeah. time and time again for reading everywhere else his boss his wife you know the the pe people he's serving at the bank everybody and he goes in there to read and eat his lunch and a nuclear bomb drops which you got to remember again remember the time period that this is in this is a the true fear of people this is something that people feared was going to happen to america or somewhere else in the world this is not this like oh a bomb this was a true fear and a common reoccurring theme in the show is, is nuclear war. So um, the bomb goes off. He gets locked inside a vault. He's the only person left in the entire world that, you know, you can tell in this episode. And at first it's like, oh my gosh, this is, you know, he's like the last one. He's exploring the wreckage, goes home. He knows his wife is dead. Da, da, da. He almost which, ends by, it. which by the way, the, the, the little trick of having the audio play from his boss's tape recorder I always think is such a genius move because he thinks his boss is alive briefly, but it's really just the tape recorder right. playing. And I think that was such a good way to add to this, the suspense and the reality of like what happened. Like you said, he finds a gun, almost blows his brains out. But then he's like, wait a minute. If the library is still around. <laughs> he, he happens to like, I don't know. He like looks to the side to get a better angle on his head. I, I don't know. And he looks at this and it just happens to re the public library yep. sign. Yep. So he ends up like overjoyed because now for the rest of his life, he can read. That's it. He can he can just read. He goes to the library 
And he creates his, he's got his food and his snacks and he's all ready. And he's like, he's got books lined up for the next three years. January, February. That's my favorite part. March. And he's like freaking out. And then I forget how he does it. Does he trip and they fall off? He sits down. I think he leans over to pick something up. Okay. That's what it was. And they his fall. glasses fall off. He's wearing glasses, which is. Uh, they use two pairs of glasses. They use one that was really thick for the close-up shots of him and then one with clear for the long shot so he could actually see what he was doing as an actor, which I found interesting. And uh, he ends up stepping on his glasses and destroying them, meaning he can't read anymore. He can't read. <laughs> uh, according to the, the imagery shown, the dude can barely even seem to walk walk down the steps. Yeah. He can't he, even see. Yeah. Like, he's that blind. When my wife was pregnant with Hunter, so we're talking, he's seven, so eight years ago, we were watching uh, the series. I think it was the New Year's when they do the series um, run through and the episode came on. And we were watching it and she starts crying because obviously when you're pregnant, your hormones are on like 11 and she just starts, she's like, oh, is he? all he wanted to do was read. And then at the end of the episode, Burgess Meredith goes, time. I all I had was time. And you're just Dude. like. <laughs> When he sits there and he says, uh, he says his immediate reaction is disbelief and it's quiet. He's speechless. And the first thing that comes out of his mouth is like, it's not fair. I was like, oh, that was crushing. It's not fair is probably the like, yes, that, that's the best. That is the best thing that could probably come out of your mouth. Maybe not how I would. But that's what I would mean if not what I would say, but what I would mean. Mm hmm. And I was just like, oh, he's just like soul crushing. And then because now he can't even find the gun. And then Rod Serling with his his closing narrations, which are usually like incredible, opens up with the best laid plans of mice and men. I was like, oh, <laughs> yes, Rod, yes. Rod, that was perfect. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> so, I mean, that again, we're starting with two of the best episodes in the entire series. That is such a mind like it. You, you sit back and you conceptualize the fact that he's alone. He can finally do the thing he wanted to do for imagine as because we're gamers. We have a lot of gamers that listen. You had access to like this arcade or GameStop or something and there was still power and no one and you could just play every game you wanted for the rest of eternity. And then the power goes out but <laughs> in the course of in the course of I, I don't know. We'll call it two hours, right? The course of two hours. This guy goes from the most extreme low of lows. Yep. Low of lows to the point where I am not going to live anymore. I'm going to take, I'm going to self eliminate and, and I'm done. It's you can't get any lower to immediately the highest of highs of emotions for him. All he, the thing he loves most in this world, he gets to just do forever. And he experiences those emotions in such a short time span to then have, taken away Crazy. I'm, reading, I'm reading if there's any uh, other mistakes or anything but I mean it's oh this is funny despite the H-bomb concussion that breaks the crystal in Bemis's pocket watch uh, that's his name Henry Bemis the light bulb in the hanging light in the vault not only remains intact but stays lit during the total destruction going on outside <laughs> didn't even think about that where's the power source yeah i mean there's little stuff that they make mistakes with but no one at the end of the day you don't really care um uh mr bemis expects to live for years and years uh the effects of nuclear fallout were still under initial study and not widely understood yet we see bemis emerging from the bank vault more or less immediately after a thermonuclear blast um eating packaged food that was probably uh, irradiated. Uh, yeah, so radiation. even with his glasses, Bemis will not live long enough to enjoy his books. <laughs> That's such a bubble pop. But again, at the time, they didn't understand they the didn't effects know that. of radiation. So I take these things with a grain of salt and enjoy it for what it is. Because it, it was very enjoyable. I thought uh, it was an awesome episode. Yeah. And, and, and again, as long as you can do that and put it in the frame of mind that you're watching this in 1959, you will thoroughly enjoy this show thoroughly, but you have to do that. You can't go into this watching it as if it's happening now. I did watch one last night uh, and I, we're not going to cover this episode, so I can talk about it. But it, it it's basically it's actually starring Burgess Meredith again. And um, the state controls everything. It's 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 a 
dictatorship and you know talking about how people are obsolete if if they don't follow the rules of the state and i was like this is really applicable to you know the current state of super things. scary yeah it's terrifying that you know and there's one line too where he's like you know hitler stalin they didn't go far enough that was their problem i was like jesus and you gotta oh remember God. this is this is 15 years after the conclusion of world war ii so this is more and more fresh for them than it was for us um but yeah he really drills at home and it it's a very good episode the message is good because he talks about like once i speak an idea out loud you can't it's out there you can't take it away if people heard it they have it um true uh so it's it's a very good episode uh switching over again this is this is season one uh for the first one this is episode 22 the monsters are due on maple street uh, again a 9.0 on imdb user rating around tomatoes is through the roof everybody loves these two episodes uh we'll cover some that are controversial this one uh audrey my daughter my oldest daughter actually actually she watched in psychology class mike yeah, dude this is this is the <sighs> What everyone deems witch hunt on social on Twitter. Yeah, this, this, this is the this physical embodies. manifestation of it. This is the exact. Yes. Yes. This is the physical manifestation of the witch hunt. So this one takes place uh, any town USA in the in the 60s, early late 50s, early 60s on Maple Street, which is an aptly named for a street for any town USA. And basically this thing flies above the town and then the, all the power on the block goes out and then everyone starts to lose their mind and they start accusing everyone because one of the kids says oh i read this in my comic book you know the aliens are attacking the aliens but they they disguise themselves as humans as scouts to come down so then the whole episode is everyone pointing the finger at everyone else on the block that they're the alien turns out at the end there were aliens there but they're just they're screwing with everyone as, as a social experiment they're observing from afar yeah and they're like all we have to do is turn off their electronics and you know make a few things flicker and it just creates utter chaos that's it they they all kill each other yeah and and that we are not doing it justice with the description i just gave you you this there's is one, one you point. have to experience for yourself there's one point where a guy has focus on him uh as as being part of the alien race and in order to deflect or to to not be the target he points out a little kid the kid who said who relates back to his comic books, he points at him and deflects all the, the mob to go after this kid. Yeah. The fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the, this episode shows you how fragile, uh, the constructs of society are. Uh, and like you Mike said, see today, that's, yeah. I mean, that's happening today. Yeah, it, this can be attributed to social media so well. Uh, on on you know. social media and media, yeah. the news does this all the time. Yeah, just you know, change a few switches, flick a few things, and and alter the story slightly enough, uh, and start having people point fingers at each other, and you know, just segregate point fingers. You d d just oh yeah, and all they're doing is like turning a car on and off or flickering lights in a house while the power's out. Little stupid dumb things. The one guy, because he's got a ham radio in his basement, they're all like, who are you talking to on that yeah, ham radio? Yeah, he's suspect. Yeah, it, it's, it's, and by the end, it's just, they end up killing someone uh, who went Doesn't on the, the other whole block. Town, the whole town just become, just devolves and kill. It's not even the kill. town, it's just the block. That's the catch. That's right. It's just so the block. It starts off with the, 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 the one Charlie, I think his name was super jumpy guy and itchy trigger finger. Oh, the and asshole? they see an unknown person walking and, yeah. and he's like, take him out. He's like, we don't know who he is or what he's doing. We he's don't like, we have the, no idea. It's the alien. He keeps yelling. It, no, it's the, and he kills him. And they realize, oh, he's just like a maintenance guy or something. It he's was the just, neighbor from the beginning of the episode that yeah. was like, I'm going to go see what's happening on Elm Street and see he if they have minding power. his own business. That's it. He went, to go, no, he went to go get help. And then by the end, they all turned on each other and I, I they were all started killing each other. Well, at least it, shows, that, it shows the dots my, of them running around and one they pans out to the aliens up on the hill. Because well, there was like a lot of like up close, like you could see my nose and my left eye only shots. So yep. what I interpreted was violence occurring. Oh, 100 percent. And it was just very cr like crazy camera panning and and then it goes out. So I interpreted it as they all. 
went it, crazy and killed each other. From a cinematography point of view, what a great way to showcase violence with the restrictions that they had on television in, in that time period. That's immediately what I because uh, they can't assumed they can't be. show people they can't show certain things at that time. Uh, what we can show on television now and what they could show back then is night and day. Like they couldn't show the things we show. So to get that idea across to you, like you said, those close up face pans of the angry face, the crazy eyes, things like that. That was how they got the point across to you before they showed the the dots running around in the street while the aliens were talking and the lights are flickering and you know and again because they. They focus out, and it's just the one block that's doing that. And it's just the one block. He goes, this happens every time? Yeah. They went in, he goes, yep. Yeah. Turn, flick a, like, turn off a few lights and flickers Happens and stuff. every time. Turn off their electronics, that's what he says. It's just crazy that the idea of this was recognized and seen like 60 plus years ago. Mm-hmm. And it's still the same, the same shit. But it's the same thing being employed over and over and yeah, over and over. It, it, and then and then you sit back and you look at it. You're like, oh, this is the human psyche. This is this is in our DNA. We're wired to almost the survival instinct of like, oh, you're blaming me. Well, no, it's not me. It's this or you or something else. It's not Crazy. me. Easy. Yeah. And and, and it, it, it it's not necessarily like let's diffuse the situation like the one guy kept trying to do the the leader. Yeah. Uh, whose name escapes me at the moment. Um, but. It's it's no, I'm going to blame someone else to get it off of my back. Steve. Steve is the the when that guy points at the kid and the whole crowd turns to the kid. Yeah. How did you know? How did you know it was going to be like this? You said it was. Oh, that was like what? And one one big thing, too, with um, both episodes and, and my big takeaway, and this is most of the show is the acting is so good. Yeah, so good. It, it, it you if you again if you are enjoying it the way i enjoy it you are sucked in immediately and i've seen it i've seen that episode probably 10 15 times i'd say it's probably not fair that i'm watching two of probably the best episodes like you just said in of the whole anthology so no nah, because the show is still good like there's plenty of other good right. ones it may not be like the best of the best say, because now my expectations are really like incredibly high. You'll st- we will not even be able to cover all of the best ones with the eight oh, okay. that we're going to talk about. Like next year, we'll have more to talk about. There's, I think between I could count all of the duds on both hands in all of the episodes. That's it. There's wow. not a lot, and I skip those because they're they're just not even worth my time. Like the last episode of the series sucks balls. It's terrible. Okay. It's awful. And there's a few along the way that you're just like, eh. And season four kind of sucks. Because season four is when they tried to go to hour long episodes instead of 25 minutes. And it I don't know, it doesn't translate the same way. A lot of those episodes are just not good. Right. Um, but, you know, most of the show is really good. And even the episodes That's that, impressive. Are, that are like, you know, if these are considered a nine out of ten. I would say the rest of the good ones are like between seven and nine. Like wow. they don't really dip below that. And then the ones that suck just suck. That's um, really impressive. Yeah, no, it's it's quality television. Like I said, Danielle sits there and goes, he's years out of his time. 